Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Rostenberg again from BeyondMTHFR.com. And I'm excited to share with you today the first of several videos that are going to highlight for us the connection between methylation, MTHFR, and the gut, and more specifically, the stress gut connection. And I believe the science contained in this series helps to explain why some people when they take supplements based off their genetic report or to support their methylation pathways get worse in other words what's going on in the gut is the reason why taking vitamins that are good for most people make some people even worse and that is the big idea we're going to cover in the next series of videos the SNPs of concern, in my personal and clinical opinion, the most problematic genes for disrupting our gut due to the effects of stress are ACE, COMT, GAD, MAO, and MTHFR. MTHFR would also include the other related enzymes such as MTR, MTRR, MTHFS, etc that whole uh, folate pathway cycle um, and, and its effect on the methylation cycle is a big player in how we process our catecholamines and our stress uh, hormones and the reason why is these these SNPs combine to create a perfect storm and I'm going to talk about this over and over again because this is one of the most important aspects of treating people with uh, methylation problems is realizing that it's not just one SNP by itself, it's how they all combine to affect the clinical presentation. But angiotensin converting enzyme, COMT, GAD, uh, all of these three basically increase the sympathetic activity. Uh, angiotensin is a hormone that's released as part of the adrenal's response to stress. Having the ACE deletion, having the ACE um, SNP means you're going to have higher levels of angiotensin and that causes vasoconstriction to the blood vessels that nourish the gut and viscera. I'll explain that in further videos, but uh, that causes negative effects to the gut. The COMT enzyme, we all know now that that is a key player in breaking down our hormones, adrenaline, noradrenaline, and dopamine. And as you'll see, those are the hormones that cause bugs in our gut to go crazy. Uh, GAD, Again, that's glutamic acid decarboxylase. That is basically glutamate. So if we don't if we don't break down glutamate very well, we're more likely to be affected uh, by glutamate, and that has a tendency to have an inflammatory effect on our nervous system and increases the uh, stress response. MAO uh, again, usually it's uh, the problem with MAO is that it's sped up, and we know uh, MTHFR from previous videos and. Uh, we will go into that in more detail in the future. What I want to really share with you today, the most important part of this, if you learn one thing from this video, is that stress hormones cause rapid growth of gram-negative bacteria. This bacteria is always present in our gut. It's normal and it's supposed to be there. However, the bacteria is very sensitive to what the host, us, is experiencing. And the, the bacteria listens for signals from us to see whether or not we are stressed out. And what they have, researchers have figured out is if you take two petri dishes filled with plasma and you put a little E. coli in there and you squirt adrenaline into one and you squirt, you don't put any adrenaline in the other petri dish, adding adrenaline to the petri dish causes the E. coli to grow 10,000 times faster. Four logarithmic scales is 10,000 percent. It's a very giant increase in growth. So bugs grow when we're stressed out. That's a key point. We know that the gut and the brain talk to each other and um, this is nothing new for uh, you know researchers or, or, or students out there. But the important thing to remember is that the enteric nervous system lives in the gut wall. It lives in the gut 
wall, the stomach wall, the esophageal wall, the small intestine, large intestine, rectum, sigmoid colon, etc. That's where this whole nervous system lives. And it's always communicating back to the brain and other organs. So whatever's happening in our gut, our body is acutely aware of. And this is an important pro point because um, patients who experience symptoms that flare up when they take vitamins, especially quote unquote methylation support vitamins, the reason they're having a symptom is because of the imbalance in their gut and that has to get treated first. It's what we do in our office. It's how we help people. We can walk you through that process. This is more data. Studies are showing just like that first slide I showed you that showed a 10,000 percent four log increase in growth. This is a chart showing the red bacteria are the pathogenic bacteria. Okay. Density or, or, or quantity. This is pre-stress hormones, pre-stress experience, post-stress experience. Do you see the change? Do you see the increase in size of the, of the pathogenic growth of bad, bad, bad bugs? So stress is our biggest problem. And managing stress is different for everybody, yet, yet the same, uh, because, because certain rules apply. But really, we need to know that when we are experiencing high stress, our gut is also experiencing that. Over half of all adrenaline that we release in, in our body gets dumped into the lumen of the gut. Over half of all adrenaline that we release goes directly into the gut. That adrenaline goes straight to these bacteria who take it as a sign that prolonged stress can significantly change the composition of the intestinal flora. And this makes us more susceptible to things like C. diff, or E. coli, or sepsis, or a bladder infection. Sound familiar? These are things that we deal with in our clinic every day. And when you see someone who comes in who survived sepsis or some kind of E. coli infection, you know that they've been under prolonged stress or they have the genetics that keep their stress hormones elevated. The thing to remember is if your stress hormones are being released and you have SNPs that make it harder for your body to break down those stress hormones, that means the adrenaline is in the gut longer. And that would that, that can be a problem because the gut uh, is responding to the adrenaline by, uh, by uh, bacteria that we don't want to grow is growing because of the adrenaline. So SNPs make this problem worse is the moral of that story. So salmonella grows faster when adrenaline, specifically noradrenaline, is added in, the, in a study. So if you take salmonella and you give it access to our catecholamines, our stress hormones, it grows faster. I'm, a, I'm going to explain why. Okay, It's not just the hormone itself. But what you need to know is that stress-related catecholamines modulate the, the virulence of enteric bacterial pathogens. Okay? In, in, plain, in plain English, that means that stress gives bad bacteria signals to grow and be more aggressive. That's what you got to know. And the reason why stress does that is that stress allows bacteria to steal our iron. Okay? Our body keeps iron like locked up on an armored truck because it doesn't want anything other than our own cells to have access to it. However, if you give bacteria stress hormones, aka catecholamines, then those bacteria get access to our iron. And that poses a problem because once bacteria gets our iron, they can then utilize it for rapid growth. So this is what the research says. Stress hormones cause bad bugs in our gut to grow faster. The way it happens is the stress hormones give bad bugs access to our iron. Is anybody listening dealing with chronic anemia? That's something we see in our office all the time. And we often see it in patients who grew up taking a lot of antibiotics, having a lot of ear infections, having a lot of gut problems. This explains why. The gut being sick, filled with stress hormones, is allowing bugs to steal the iron from us, a la chronic anemia. Okay, it's a, it's a bacterial nutrient source. Iron is a bacterial nutrient source, and when we are stressed out, bad bugs get aggressive and steal it from us. 
Adrenaline causes biofilm formation. This is a study looking at staph. Staph can be a bad bug. It can cause MRSA. It kills people. If you give staph access to our stress hormones, if staph is overgrowing in our gut and we, get, we go into a long, prolonged stress reaction or we have SNPs that are causing us to keep our stress hormones elevated for too long, the staph will increase biofilm formation. All biofilm formation is, is like the buildings, the architecture that bacteria builds in a colony. It just means that the bacteria has been there a long time and they've had a chance to build, for all intents and purposes, their, their architecture, their city that they live in. It's harder for us to it's harder for our body to kill biofilm, but it's not impossible. One of the best tools we have is glutathione and NAC. NAC is a mucolytic, it cuts biofilm. But what you need to know is that stress hormones allow staph and other bacteria, gram negative bacteria, to steal our iron. And when they steal our iron, they grow like crazy. So stress does affect our gut, and this is one of the main ways it does it. Now the good news, I've maybe scared you or made you feel a little uneasy looking at all those gross pictures. The thing to remember is, by knowing how the problem works, tells us how to fix it. That's why answering the question why is so important. We now know that the gut communicates with the brain. We talked about that already. The enteric nervous system lives in the wall of the gut. This is a picture here showing you from the esophagus to the uh, rectum. It's all there. What, what, who, who and what lives in our gut is responsible for regulating anxiety, mood, cognition, and pain. Is anybody listening, uh, like many of my patients who suffer from anxiety and chronic pain or have brain fog or are very moody? I've been there, okay? When you fix your gut, it changes your whole life. And you need to recognize that those symptoms, anxiety, mood swings, difficulty thinking, and pain are major signs of a gut problem. Okay, this is what the research is saying. Now, one of the big problems uh, with uh, you know people who suffer from anxiety is that you know you're just basically given met, uh, pharmaceuticals and said you know have a nice life, you'll be taking this for the rest of your life. For a lot of patients, that's just not okay, philosophically nor uh, health-wise. So what we know is that um, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is a growth factor that allows neurons to grow, make new connections, it makes us smarter. It's a great thing. And it decreases glutamate channels. So it decreases inflammation. It increases learning and decreases glutamate problems. So if there's a glutamate problem, you got to start with the gut first. This research says from 2013, oral probiotics increase brain-derived uh, neurotrophic factor and impart significant anxiolytic effects, meaning Good bugs in your gut, once, once the gut's been healed and cleaned out, like on our program in our office, patients experience improved learning and lower anxiety. And that's what the research says. Because probiotics increase uh, the hormones in the gut that are healthy, that are happy, that improve how we feel. So people out there listening who are really just struggling with supplementation, they just continue to get worse no matter what recipe they try, I'm guaranteeing you. You have a gut problem, and I'm going to explain why now. I'm going to explain why that gut problem is giving you your symptoms. Why do methyl nutrients make my symptoms worse? Well, because gut bugs have a methylation cycle also. So if you already have an overgrowth of gram-negative bacteria or salmonella or E. coli or C. diff, to name a few, they will eat your B vitamins first. I'm just hate to say it that way, but it's true. They're going to steal your vitamins and grow with it. So before we give you vitamins that actually help you and your genes express health, we have to remove the roadblock. We have to remove the bad bugs, okay? So there's methyltransferases and all kinds of bacteria. Here they're mentioning tuberculosis. Same story. E. coli uh, has homocysteine in it. So if it has homocysteine, you can take it to the bank that it has a methylation cycle, guys. So if you already have an overgrowth of, of E. coli and you, all you do is take 
you know, methyl B12 and methyl folate and you get sick, it's not the fault of methyl folate or methyl B12. It's we've got to clean up the gut first. And I really hope uh, I've made that uh, giving you some evidence here to, to back that up. But this is brand new science. It's coming out last year and, and even this year. Um, this is an important part of treating methylation disorders. It's a really important part of what we do. So if you're struggling out there dealing with symptoms that just don't make sense and you're ready for a change, uh, please reach out and uh, leave any comments or questions you have uh, you know, on my, on my blog, on my website. I, I, I will answer them. I will look at them. And uh, just to recap real quick, the SNPs that are the problem are the ACE, COMT, GAD, MAO, MTHFR. These conspire to increase adrenaline, which increases growth of bacteria. A bacteria uses the adrenaline to steal your iron, and with the iron, they make biofilms and take up residence in your gut. Then you take vitamins to try and get better, and you actually just cause the bacteria to grow even faster because bacteria have methylation cycles too. Then you end up with anxiety, mood disorders, cognition problems, you know, foggy brain and pain, and then the solution fix the gut, you'll get smarter, and you'll feel better. I can help you do that. Thanks for your list. Thanks for your time today. Look out for the next video in this series. Thank you. It's coming next week. Bye-bye.